Okay, uh, there was a GraphQL meetup uh, this week, and like, how many people use GraphQL? Only 50% of the hands went up. So can I try it here? How many people use GraphQL? Great, this is for you. I mean the people who didn't raise their hands, right? <laughs> so our apps has um, a lot of APIs. Your, your apps is very busy. You have a lot of features, earning a lot of money. Um, and to, but today, we are going, just going to talk about one, one of the API that you are over here. One of the API, which also means that um, it's the same authentication, same middleware, same client, same server, same everything. You're very familiar. We're just going to edit one of your API. So um, something very simple. If the request command is greet, and I'll return you the greeting, right? And if you happen to say uh, set greet, I will set it to greeting and so that the next time you'll get my value. So this is a, a contract. We call this a contract. This is an API. Refactoring a little bit. We have two functions, set greet, takes in a string, returns a string, greet, returns a string. OK, so far so good. But in our apps with many APIs, of course, it's going to be more than four, because CRUD, and then you have like five entities. Um, how I wish that we could have a way to describe our document, our, our, our APIs. Right? If only there is a way to document this. Right, so, so some of you may like, yeah, I see a hand, right? So <laughs> uh, Postman, yes, Postman Postman is very good to describe your API. Exactly, this, uh, you can tell exactly what my API is, wants to do right now, right? And then like, ah, oh, Postman fans are like, oh, that's not fair, nobody looks at the JSON, right? Okay, yeah, you're right, let's look at the UI. Exactly, this is even more perfect. I know what my API does now. So isn't it silly that this, like, um, our code can't describe the APIs that we want? How, how, do, how do people do it? I mean, there are software before internet, right? How do we document and describe our APIs? I wonder if only if there is some way to look at things and understand what they do. Like, maybe a function signature, right? Function signature is good. Okay, I have two APIs here, essentially. Set greet, give me a text, return a string. And then a greet returns a string. Oh, great. So somebody else thought that it was a great idea, too, that if we could just specify the function signature, that's my API. What else do I need, right? And this is specimen. This is actual GraphQL. This works. If you put it up there, it will, it will actually work. And for those counting, just now this one was also specimen. So with this very a succinct way to describe your API, OK, fine. What, what do I get? Well, you get free API, uh, interface to allow you to explore your APIs. And now we're not talking about uh, request path, query. We're talking about repositories. You're talking about your API. How does it work, right? So notice that this thing comes with autocomplete. And this is a GitHub example, um, selecting my last seven repositories, which happens to be all Elm, actually. So, but, so this interface has, is written uh, without knowledge of your API. But once it hooks up to it, you can now talk your language. If you have a Pokemon GraphQL, now you're talking about, hey, monsters, powers, and stuff. It's not like query path or, or HTTP post or HTTP get. So, well, OK, you have progressed from that long uh, Postman JSON to such a short description of your GraphQL schema. And you have a tool to use to manipulate your APIs. So what's the catch? What do I have to do? What kind of hard work do I have to do to change the way I'm doing things right now um, in order to get this, right? So let's look at making a request that we do today. Uh, most of this code is rather standard. Uh, we'll just be looking at how the information is being encoded into JSON. So this is the simple version. You have a greet, a text greet, and then uh, like we see just now, you encode it in JSON, you send it over to the server. So to do GraphQL, just put the value into a dictionary. That's it. For those who like to see the JSON properly, this would be what you're doing today. OK, I do a JSON and send it over. But if the endpoint happens to be a GraphQL, then just wrap it in a query and variables. Right? No big deal, right? So how about the response? OK, if I send this over to the server, which is a GraphQL server, then what do I get back? Do I get SOAP, XML? Well, in this example, set greet, you get a string back. Uh, not very good example, but I'll show the better one later. But in GraphQL, then you will just be getting this back. Set greeting happens to be the function name that you're calling. So 
I don't think this changes your uh, work a lot. It's not a huge disruption to your code. So by doing this kind of wrapping, you can already talk to GraphQL. You don't need to uh, adopt a heavy library, uh, some client side library. You can continue to use your URL session or stuff. So this is a slightly more complicated example. If you call an API, you get back a list of stuff. What do you get back when you call a GraphQL endpoint? A list of stuff nested in two things. So if you can see, it doesn't change a lot. What you're doing now, today, with your HTTP endpoints, you can already benefit from GraphQL by simply doing that. And you get your nice small schema and an easy to use autocomplete uh, console to boot, right? All right. <laughs> so what, what happens day to day is that uh, now you have different APIs to call. In your code, you will have hard coded some URLs. I want to call this API. I'm going to bring this URL in and I'll bring my value and make a call. I need to make this API and bring that URL in, bring the value, make a call. So the, the code change that you have to do is now, the URL is all the same, but now you have to, I bring this query in and I make the call. I bring this query in and I make the call. So um, no difference. But let's say uh, the front end developers, oh, I'm sold, uh, I'm okay to do GraphQL, but why should the back end providers give you? Why should your colleague give you, right? So if we look at the, Usually, back end is more like worried, security concern. But if you look at the HTTP API um, scope, you see that it does a lot of things, and it, uh, there's some parsing. And over here, it's basically taking a string of input from the HTTP and making it into your type. So you have your user, and your user, you can do company's age, email, you can do your code there, and then you return some stuff, and you encode them into JavaScript, uh, JSON, and you send it back to the client for the iOS to do. So the question is, where is GraphQL? GraphQL is actually just right here. It's passing the request and constructing the response. Right? So if you narrow down and understand that it is only covering these two portion, you realize that a hey, GraphQL is just a request format. Because today we are inventing our own format. Hey, bro, I want a calendar app. Uh, send me ID equals to two. OK. And then, and then, and then uh, what, what do I want the response to be? And then you just invent these things out of your ass, right? Hmm, okay. Uh, but if, if you go with this, at least you have some types to, to guide, guide you with. So it's just a specification. For the back end, you don't have to change what you do. You don't have to change your language. If you do Ruby, you have Ruby back end. Uh, they're all middlewares that's suitable for your language needs. And then, but I read, I read that a client could select exactly what they want to get back. You know, they can get what they want or the right query for what they want. So the thing that I got initially, why would I put a query engine on my database on the internet, right? Silly, but um, it is not a backdoor to steal unauthorized data. If you remember where we scope GraphQL just now, it's at the serialization and deserialization. That is no place where uh, unauthorized data leaks is actually your process that, is, that defines it. It is also, this is very, very important, micro, GraphQL is not a microservice for you to deploy and babysit and do pager duty with, okay? So it is just a library to do the request payload and the response. It's also not a framework, it's a library. It's not mutually exclusive with REST. Emphasizing this, so this is my own uh, decision tree. Does your endpoint need to do HTTP headers, cookies, redirects, HTTP endpoint? Does your uh, endpoint need to do binary body, download an Excel file, endpoint? Otherwise, if it's just JSON talking to JSON, just add a GraphQL function in the nice schema, right? Then, and you're done. You have documentation, you have runtime, you have type checks. It's good. And somebody, some of you may look at this and like, uh, so you know, not much of a gain. It's like 50-50. But this is not to scale, because if you look at your API right now, how many Porsche per percentage of them has to deal with the headers? It's the authentication stuff, maybe. Uh, and how many will deal with binary bodies? Some download stuff. Maybe. So the actual scale is, is something more like that, right? So a lot of your functionality can actually go to this side, and just a few REST endpoints go to there. And all of them, uh, I must remind, 
is protected by the same authentication middleware that whatever you have set up. Okay? So this is not one uh, rogue endpoint that does everything and leaks data. So let's look at the day in the life of a, a developer. Hey, I need to give an endpoint to do post. Okay, so hmm, to be restful, I need to do get, get, post. Let's do pluralization, right? So post. And then on the GraphQL side, say, hey, I'm going to do all posts, a function, returns an array of posts. Right now, I'm already determining uh, something should be uh, required with a bang. It's opposite of Swift, question mark with optional. And over here, then you have already determined the type. In fact, after I write this thing, I said, hey, actually, I need page. So pages one, pages two, pages three. So I already said that this, uh, this function will need an argument. I am working at a pretty high level here, right? deciding what this, what this API should actually be. And then the other guys are uh, maybe post slash page, right? Maybe it looks nicer this way. Now, well, so since I have the signature, I can already write a function to do this thing. And uh, this is in Go. So the function that does it just matches the argument, matches the function name, matches the return type. And we are basically done. How about if I do a query for page parameter, right? So you're still deciding this thing. OK, so in fact, I think we need to add page size was for page size and I'm deciding here that page size should be should be required and page should be optional. You know, if, you if you don't tell me the page, I'll give you page one, fine. And in fact, I've even gone on to add another uh, function down there called create post and implemented it with the same meta signature. All done, type check, if I did anything wrong, if uh, I'm returning an integer here, it won't even compile because it doesn't match the schema. How about if I post to post with a JSON body, right? And so that I can put the page and the page size inside. So on the GraphQL side, you already, this, is, this schema is very, very clear. The API input and output, everything is type check. And you get a free uh, interface to, <laughs> to play. So, um, so net net is that the, for the, for the back end developers, what GraphQL does is that it shrinks down everything to just a function. You just have to concentrate on this function right now, right? So H, same authentication, same middleware. Is TDD very friendly, right? So who does TDD? If, you're, if you don't do TDD yet, you should check out this video done by a good guy. I know this guy, right? So it's, it's a good talk. You don't take my word for it, right? So like other people like it too. Yes, thank you. Wow, you shouldn't have. Well, like, okay, so in summary, the front end is super familiar. You just have to wrap your uh, request and unwrap the data. Uh, you get a free console, focus on functions, and you get TDD back ends, and there's, there's no security uh, scare, right? Uh, it's just middleware, and you can do your same uh, JWT and calls, right? So did I tell you to check out the TDD video? It really helps. Thank you.